Hi there, in this video we're going to do uh, a number of t-tests using SPSS. So of course these tests would be used when we want to evaluate particular values of a mean or compare the mean from two populations. Our first example is a one sample t-test where you can evaluate whether the true value of a mean takes on a particular value. And in this example we're going to look at the degree of reading power measured on a sample of 44 students. The degree of reading power measures an individual's ability to comprehend text, so the score it goes from 0 to 100, 100 being perfect comprehension, 0 being poor comprehension. And if we want to evaluate whether the mean of this population takes on a particular value, we do a one-sample t-test by coming up here to analyze, select compare means, select one-sample t-test, and there we're presented with the dialog box where we can select the variable of interest. Simply double-clicking it or clicking the transfer button here brings it over to the variables that we would like to test. And then we can uh, enter the, uh, the hypothesized value of the mean, so the value that we would like to test for whether the true mean takes on this value. The uh, default value is zero, but if we want to enter any other value in there, we can. And in this case, we would then be testing the null hypothesis that the true mean is equal to 32. Select OK, and we see our output window where we get a, 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 the first box here that gives us the uh, descriptive statistics of this single sample, which of course you could use to calculate the t-test on your own, uh, gives you the variable of interest, the sample size for that variable, the mean of that variable in our sample, the standard deviation at 11.2, and the standard error or the standard deviation of the mean. The actual t-test and the results of the t-test are down in this lower box that says one sample t-test. Again, it lists the name of the variable, the t-statistic, which if you did the uh, sample mean minus mu naught divided by um, the standard error of the mean, you would get 1.832. The degrees of freedom for this t uh, test are 43, which would give us a resulting p-value of 0 0.074 for a two-tailed test. I'll come back to that in a second. The uh, difference between the means uh, in this uh, particular sample, or the difference between the mean value and the hypothesized value, I should say, is 3.1 and a confidence interval for the difference between the mean and the hypothesized value is given here. Now the one thing I want to point out is that this is a two-tailed test, so that means that this is a two-sided null hypothesis. The null hypothesis, since we gave a test value of 32, was that the true mean is equal to 32, and the alternative is that the true mean is not equal to 32. SPSS doesn't actually give you the p-value for a one-sided test, but you could just divide this two-tailed test you could divide that by 2 to get the p-value for your one-sided test. To move on now and to compare two, the mean of two populations is a sample from the textbook, but this is uh, to explain the two variables that we measure on a sample of uh, 70 individuals is a score which measures their number of good friends and whether the individual was a man or a woman. In this case, zero is for men, and I know this because in variable view, I believe the variable label gives us that information, so the sex variable is coded as zero for men and one for women, and the score, I'm mistaken, the score was prospects for employment. So they created this on a scale from zero to ten. So the hypothesis is whether an individual's prospects for employment are different between men and women. So in this case, you, you'll notice that uh, even though we're comparing two groups, we just enter the value of the score variable and the sex variable for each separate individual. So to do the two sample test, you come up here to compare means, and we have individual samples of men and women. This is an independent samples t-test of two groups. This is a little bit trickier in terms of entering the types of variables we want to use. The first key is to enter the test variable, the variable of interest. We were interested in whether the, there's a difference in prospects of employment for the two groups, so we would select that as the test variable. And we want to define our groups or define our populations by the value of the sex variable, so you enter that into the grouping area down here. We're not quite done yet, as we need to in, actually in, input the values of that variable sex that define our two groups. And in this case, group one, the men, was zero, and group one, group two, the women, was valued at one. And now press continue. And now it actually indicates the two values that define our groups. Now if we select OK, it will execute a two-sample t-test for the testing the hypothesis that the mean in the two groups defined by the grouping variable, whether that mean is the same. Let's go to the output window. 
And now here you can see a very similar uh, descriptive statistics box where we're given the uh, breakdown of the variable prospects of employment for the two groups. So there's 35 men and 35 women. The mean is slightly higher at 6.2 than it is for the men, for the women, and the standard deviation is very similar. One nice feature of the two-sample t-test in SPSS is that it gives us the two flavors of the two-sample t-test. First, if we, <coughs> if we assume equal variances and conduct the t-test in that way, we are given the, um, the results of that test statistic. Secondly, if we don't want to assume equal variances, we're also given that test statistic. So whether you're assuming either way, you can actually get both statistics done in one spot. Um, you're also given a uh, Levine test for equal variances. And again, the, that hypothesis would be the null hypothesis that the variances are equal. So since this is a very large p-value, we are unable to reject that null hypothesis, and we would assume then that the variances are equal, and then we can use this first row. So here you can see the t-statistic is 1.394, 68 degrees of freedom, and uh, the two-tailed or the two-sided p-value. Again, you also get the estimated difference between the two means and a confidence interval for the, the difference between the mean of the men and the mean of the women. The key, of course, is the p-value here for the t-statistic, and of course this is greater than a typical alpha value of 0 0.05 or even a 0 0.1, and so we would say that there is no significant difference between the two groups. Had the variances been different in the two groups, you would have seen this first significant, uh, this first p-value or significant level uh, being very small. If there were variances were different, this F statistic would be big and the p-value for that Levine test would be less than 0.05 and you would then have to use this row down here to test uh, without the assumption of equal variances. Now for a paired t-test, We have another example here where we have nine individuals and every individual was tested before a remedial class and after a remedial math class and they, uh, their scores on a math test are given here. So presumably their score would improve following the remedial math course. And you can see the label for that variable pops up as you hover over the column name. So of course this is not, uh, these are not independent results. You have the same individual measured at two time points. So if you'd like to compare pre to post, you have to identify the fact that these are not independent samples and that you have uh, dependent samples and in fact paired samples in this case because you have the same specific individuals measured twice. So to do our hypothesis test here, which is again a very similar hypothesis that the mean before testing is different than the mean post testing, you come in here to uh, paired t-test and you can enter the two variables just by dragging into the into the particular variable one and variable two for a particular pair. And this would apply to all of the pairs that are available in the data set. Go to our output window. And as usual, you can see our statistics. You can see the mean in uh, before class, the mean uh, of their math score after the remedial class, the sample size for both, the standard deviation, and so on. You'll notice down here, now we have the results of the paired samples t-test. So you have two samples measured twice. So the difference between pre and post is a uh, mean, of minus, the mean of minus eight. I think this is actually going backwards. It's taken uh, before, minus, sorry, yeah, before minus remedial. So in fact, the remedial course gives you a value of eight points higher. Um, but the key is, again, our test statistic for the hypothesis is at minus 3.054. If you were to look that up in the table at, at uh, on, in table C in the textbook, you would see a very small p-value as you do here, a p-value of 0 0.016, which would lead us to reject the null hypothesis of no difference and conclude that the difference in mean before the remedial class and after the remedial class is in fact different. So the remedial class has changed people's math scores. That's a very quick overview of uh, t-tests in SPSS. Please uh, add anything to the comment section if you think I've missed it.